an exciting, uh, awesome con. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the fan base out here is very supportive of the work, which is always a positive and always uh, something that you enjoy seeing from the fan base out here. So I'm just happy to be a part of it and uh, hope to see that trend continue uh, moving forward as shows start to, to come back to being a thing. Now, Friday, you mentioned that you had already sold out of your books. I, I did sell out of quite a few books right out of the gate. I think the, the TMNT Last Ronin, which is really hot right now, that, that cover that I worked on with uh, Raymond Gay and Juan Fernandez uh, just obliterated out of the gate. Uh, I think we were out of those boys by uh, late afternoon on, on the first day. So uh, some, some really cool uh, responses to, to the work. And again, I'm just happy to be involved. Now. Um we were just talking about this before I hit the uh, the go live button, but um, you're an inker. That's correct. It, what yeah. inspired you to actually be an inker? So, you know, uh, I was always enamored by the raw black and white line work. Uh, if you remember back to James Obar's The Crow, uh, the interiors on that entire series were all in, in, in black and white. And so it just felt very raw. It felt uh, interesting to, to kind of try to dissect all the different types of textures and effects that were being done in there and how you could do that with just ink, you know? Because uh, with, with pencil, you have the ability to shade, to, to have pressure, and to make things lighter or darker as you see fit. Where, as with ink, it's just it's one one color, short of doing a you know a wash of some kind. And so, uh, inking for me was about trying to embellish what uh, the foundation was already there by a penciler in such a way that it helped elevate it to to a final complete piece. And what's it like as an inker working alongside with? the actual artists and the colors. So it's a unique position to be in because you're kind of right in the middle of those guys, right? So you get to work on both sides of the coin. You're working with the penciler to ensure that you're staying true to whatever they are uh, you know, wanting on the composition, but then you're also working with the colorist in a way to try to convey what you were trying to do in the inking stage and make sure that they aren't necessarily uh, perceiving elements of it uh, incorrectly as well. And so there's this really cool, cohesive, collaborative uh, relationship that you have as a team. And at the end of the day, it's uh, it's about the team. It's, a, it's not an individual sport. Uh, <laughs> you know, each one of us has a, uh, has a part to play and I'm happy that uh, I, I have an integral role in that, so. As a hockey player, I completely understand the, the team dynamic where, you know, you, yeah, you do, you, you play your role the right way, it makes everything else just flow so much better. Oh, absolutely. So. I mean, you can definitely sense a good synergy uh, between teams that work really well together and, uh, you know, some, some friction uh, for those that don't. And I think some of the, the best uh, overall pieces or best overall uh, art that you see in comics is done by those teams that are, are really cohesive uh, in and are able to produce a really good product at the end of the day. Yeah, and um, for, for you, what outside of like Last Ronin, which by the way, I actually do have Last Ronin, I just haven't started reading it yet. Yeah. I'm waiting for all the issues to come out and I'm just going to read it one Nothing spell through. Nothing wrong with that. Um, outside Last Ronin, what are some of the projects that you've worked on that you really had the most fun doing? Well, you know, uh, believe it or not, uh, there, you know, I worked on a, a variant cover with Raymond Gay and Juan Fernandez, same team, uh, for DC's uh, Punchline number one. And that was a, a fun and unique experience because it was my first time doing something uh, for DC and the big two uh, and it, it kind of helped solidify the the progress that you make in your career right so early in my career it was uh, xenoscope related uh, projects like grim fairy tales and uh, day of the dead and hell child and all that kind of stuff and then from there you went to lady death which was a really cool uh, set of uh, books that brian polito uh, created and, and co-wrote with mike mclean and then you've got uh, from that point working over at Image and then IDW and boom and so you see like these transitions take place and the path in your career helps lead you to the next uh, point and so I think that during different stages uh, in my career depending on what time you had asked me uh, whatever the current thing was at that time would have been my favorite right 
Uh, but then as you go on and you work on like the next thing, that becomes kind of like the, the new exciting thing. It's like Christmas every single time. You're unwrapping a new toy and you get to play with it for a little while, but then you're like, ah, oh, I can't wait for the next Christmas to come so that I can get another new toy. And so there's, there's a bunch of wonderful uh, projects and series out there. And, and I, I was tickled to work on, on them, obviously, along with my team members. Uh, but I wouldn't say that there was ever one that was like the absolute favorite. It was, uh, they were really good for the time that I was doing them. And, and I'm just happy to be, like I said, involved in, in any of them. And last question before I let you go. Where can the people find you on social media? Oh, it's pretty easy. If you can remember my name and the word art, uh, that's that's the easiest way to find me. So it's just at Jeremy Clark Art. That's uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, the dot com. Uh, it's all just my name and the word art. So uh, if you want to keep track of all the new projects and new books that I'm working on, uh, that's the best place to find me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeremy. You have a great rest of the awesome con. No problem. Thank you.